Well, good morning. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Jiu Jitsu 2000 here today. I'm back, and I have an interesting video for you. Today, I want to talk about using turpentine as a fuel for a backpacking stove. Now, there was a comment that was left recently on my, on my video with the Whisperlight Universal, and the question was, could you use turpentine as a fuel in that stove? Now, I have gotten rid of that stove. I gave it to a very good friend of mine, so I don't have that stove, but what I do have here is the Optimus Polaris. Now I've done some testing off camera and I've done some research and I can honestly tell you that from my experience, yes, you can use turpentine as a fuel. However, it's a very dirty fuel, it's a very sooty uh, type of fuel and I would not recommend using it if you were going to be on a backpacking trip trying to use it in your tent's vestibule or something like that so it's definitely something that the priming process is very dirty it's very sooty very black smoke in fact it's worse than kerosene and worse than diesel but once the stove gets primed up it does heat uh, pretty well puts out a nice hot flame uh, so yes uh, from what I have found you can use this now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and prime the stove, I'm going to show you what it looks like and we'll see how it goes. This tank is already pumped up, it's already up to pressure. There. Got a little break in the wind, just enough to get it lit. So let me turn this off because it doesn't take much fuel to prime. So let me back the camera out a little bit. You can see that there's a lot of smoke. It's a very dirty fuel. You can see, just like on the tip of my finger where I touched that, it got real sooty. If you look at the trail of smoke, you can see just smoke everywhere. But this is only for the priming step once the stove's primed it actually does pretty well you can see that's black smoke everywhere looks like a oil refinery burning or something it's kinda crazy obviously you can see the winds helping out today So the, the whole purpose of the priming step is to get the stove hot enough to where it can start turning the liquid fuel into a gas. and we're almost there looks like we're fully primed now I'm gonna zoom in on the stove and let you take a closer look here at what's going on not a bad looking flame still has yellow tips right now but once this thing gets really hot and really heated up and primed well those white those yellowish tips will go away and we'll have a very nice blue flame but you can see all the soot that I'm getting on my finger off of touching all of this stuff it's kind of a filthy fuel so it's just a matter of time until it gets hot enough And of course the wind's not helping too much.
Now I don't know if this fuel will affect the O-rings in the pump. I'm not sure if it'll affect the little ball that's on a spring that the check valve if you will on the pump. I don't know if it'll damage the pump is what I'm saying so I would recommend uh, doing this at your own risk because I can't just because I say that it works here doesn't mean that uh, you need to go out and buy turpentine and use it as your fuel. This is just uh, something I'm using in fact I'm not even using if you look at the pump that I'm using here I'm not using one of my best pumps I'm using an old kind of crappy pump that came off of one of my China special stoves so I'm not using my Optimus pump I'm, I didn't want to risk that Optimus pump getting damaged so I'm using a kind of a crappy pump something easy to replace for this experiment and I will tell you that if I notice anything in the future about damage to the pump or anything as a result of using turpentine I will make a follow-up video and I'll show uh, what's happened or whatever but as of right now yes it's it's a viable fuel option again it wouldn't be something that I'd recommend and it wouldn't be one of my top fuels by any choice it would be something uh, as a last resort in my opinion you know I still have plenty of flame control of course that's the design of this stove you know you can see that there's a lot less yellow flames as there was and uh, they will continue to get less and less as this thing gets hotter and hotter But you can tell that the soot is all gone. It's not sooting anymore. There's a nice look at the flame itself. And if you look on the side of the burner bell here, you can see like some soot dancing around. I'll try to get a better glimpse of that. See that soot there dancing around? Right there where my stick is. See all that? So what I'm doing right now by flipping that fuel canister over is I'm trying to get the air out of this can and kind of bleed this line out. That's what I'm trying to do right now. I don't know how good this pump is going to be at doing that. In fact, I might have to... There we go. Once I stick that leg out there, that seems to have done it. So this is just going to depressurize the, the whole system. And it'll make it safe for me to disconnect the pump from the fuel bottle. So I'll wait till that hissing stops. So let's go ahead and disconnect here. Now, I'd like to take a look at this pump and see if there's any damage to the O-rings or anything like that on the pump that, that is visually notable. There is the fuel inside. That's the turpentine. When I look at the pump, I don't see any damage yet. Pump still sounds good. This thing has kind of a, a nasty smell to it. This fuel. In fact, what I'm thinking about doing right now is I'm thinking about taking all these parts and washing them just for just because I don't know if it's going to eat this rubber seal up or not so I think the best option would be to clean it all up and and wash it because I don't know how it's going to affect these o-rings you know this check valve here it doesn't look like there's any swelling on the o-rings or anything like that so so far things look good 
it looks like the pump held together just fine. So we should be good to go, but I'm still going to wash all this. I would recommend that you take this at your own risk. I don't know, you know, I'm not saying that it's going to work perfect or anything like that. All I'm going to show you is what I've shown in this video. And uh, personally, uh, for me personally, I would not use this as my first choice by any means. I'd use white, white gas or gasoline or kerosene or lamp oil or something like that. They're much cleaner and uh, I know that those fuels are not going to damage o-rings and things like that. Thank you to the person that left the comment asking this question. It was a good video idea. I want to clean out the system. I just got this pump out. You know, I cleaned it all, took it and cleaned it. And what I'm going to do, again, is I'm going to run some regular fuel through it. I've got my Optimus fuel here. I'm, to be honest with you, I'm not sure what fuel is in this bottle, uh, but I do know that it's probably white gas or gasoline or something. I know that the fuel that's in this bottle is a fuel that I can absolutely use in my stove. So I'm confident in that. And all I'm trying to do is clean out the system. I'm trying to clean out the fuel lines and things like that before I put this pump away. Uh, you know, I already cleaned all the parts. And I just want to clean the internal of the pump and stuff like that and just kind of get some good fuel through it. Let's kind of clean out the system. Probably seeing all that soot, uh, probably residual turpentine that was left in the system. So that'll clean up, I'm sure. Once I get to the actual fuel that's in that bottle, I'm sure that things will be a lot better. This must have been a kerosene or a lamp oil or something because it's got a lot of soot too. But again, that's probably the leftover turpentine that's creating all that soot. That's the beautiful thing about the Polaris is you don't have to think about what fuel you have in here because you don't have to change jets on the stove. If you're watching this video because you're interested in the Optimus Polaris stove, I can honestly tell you that this is a fabulous stove. I take it on quite a few trips and like I mentioned earlier, it's really nice because I don't have to worry about what fuel is in the canister because I don't have to change the jets according to fuel type like I do on the MSR Whisperlite Universal. But changing the fuel jets based on fuel type is actually a good thing because you get the optimum performance per fuel. So there's kind of a kind of a thing there where you gotta decide what is more important to you. Okay there we go. We're almost primed. As soon as the flames die down below we'll get nice beautiful blue flames. So I'm just going to let that run for a couple minutes and clean out the system. And folks, I want to say thank you for joining me today on this video on using turpentine as a fuel for your backpacking stove. I would suggest that this would not be my number one choice by any means for fuel. But it would be a good alternative if there was nothing else or if I needed an emergency fuel, I would definitely not hesitate getting turpentine if that's all that I had available. Um, so you can see that this flame is very blue. This is normal fuel that's ran through this stove. And remember the turpentine still had a little bit of yellow tips on the flames. So again, thank you for stopping by. I hope this helped you out. And appreciate you watching, and have a beautiful day, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye now.